Well, let's get the thoughts of Labour now. I'm joined here in the studio by the Shadow Justice Secretary, Steve Reid. Good to see you this morning. morning thanks, Sam. thanks for coming to see us on Sky News. Where does Labour stand on more restrictions, given the situation that we are in today? On well, more restrictions to do with Omicron. Well, the, the key to avoiding those, and we all want to avoid them if it's, if it's possible, is to make sure that testing gets out and works properly. Now, we've got a problem at the moment because the government was relying on testing to keep us safe during this period, but they haven't ensured that there is a sufficient supply of tests available for people to make sure before they go out that they haven't got COVID. And one of the reasons we're seeing this big increase in, in, in infections is if people can't check before they go out, they may be infected, they go out and they infect other people. That is what leads to the risk of, of a higher level of uh, lockdown. We don't want to see that. The government needs to get a grip on testing immediately. But testing doesn't fix the situation that we've got currently with staff shortages, acute staff shortages in hospitals, particularly in London, where we've got armed forces personnel. That's right. I mean, the government lost control by failing to make sure that the tests were, uh, were available. And we do need to now be prioritising what tests are available uh, for those key workers, essential services, the national health services, and making sure we keep the schools open because... Kids, school kids in particular, have lost too much education already. So we're having to cope with a situation that results from government failure to make sure that failure doesn't, doesn't morph into further restrictions and even another lockdown. They need to get an urgent grip on testing and roll that out. I'm hearing that from you loud and clear about the testing. What I'm not hearing from you is whether Labour would be advocating more restrictions. We're not, no. What we would advocate is prioritising the emergency services and key workers for the tests that are available and for keeping the schools open. So we have to prioritise because the government's left us with too few tests. OK, so you would almost be alongside the government in that they seem to be uh, in a place where they want us to be living with the virus. Is that Labour's You have position? to rely on the science. You know, if, if the scientists say that the virus is sufficiently um, uh, spreading at such a rate and causing a risk of overwhelming the NHS, then we have to listen to the scientists. But no one wants to go there. We don't want more lockdowns. The government has put us in the position where we're even having to consider them now. So let's get those tests on stream. Let's prioritise essential workers so we can avoid another lockdown on all the damage that does to people's family life, mental health and the economy. OK, and despite the calls coming from senior people within the NHS who are saying, you know, help, the NHS is very close to being overwhelmed, you would still uh, not bring in... Well, we will prioritise the NHS if we were um, in government. And to be honest, if we were in government and we were going to rely on testing, we would have made sure there were tests available. That, I'm afraid, uh, is, is another example of this government's sheer and utter incompetence. They've put us in this position. We must protect the NHS and education. That's where we would prioritise the tests to avoid a lockdown. Another looming crisis is, of course, the cost of living one, which is going to come to bite, isn't it, very, very soon. What is Labour's proposal for addressing that? Well, I mean, the, the situation you, you've got is, is ab we've got is absolutely terrifying at the moment. We've got the highest rate of inflation for nearly 30 years. This spring, we'll have the highest rates of personal taxation for, for 70 years. And we've, we're just going through uh, the worst decade for wage growth since the Great Depression of the 1930s. And on top of all of that now, people are seeing their fuel bills, heating bills, uh, so for Labour their homes do? going up potentially for £2,000 a year. Labour is calling on the government to immediately scrap VAT or on, on, energy, on energy bills and fuel bills it to get us through the winter. It doesn't that much of a dent in it, though, does well, it? Well, it's, it's 20%. It's 20 per cent off your fuel bill. Now, I, I, I think that will, that will help people in the short term. What we're saying is, let's but get that... But it also that helps richer people, doesn't it? Because they spend a higher proportion well, of their money on... we're talking about a short-term um, solution here, not VAT off this win winter. If you look at some of the alternatives, like increasing the warm homes discount, which certainly should be increased, the government's frozen it for seven years now, that would take weeks and weeks to put in place and we might not be, it might not be until the spring until it made any difference to people. By that point, they've already lost all of the money on their heating bills. So a VAT cut now can be implemented immediately and help households that are, are feeling, really feeling the squeeze on their bills right now. So let's do that. Longer term, we need to look at how we manage this system differently. And one of the big things we'd be looking at doing there is insulating homes. The government scrapped uh, grant funding to allow people to insulate their homes and make them more energy yeah. efficient. As a result of that, 
we have the least energy efficient homes in Europe and because of that this crisis in energy costs is hitting British families harder than, than across we're the nearly out of continent. We're nearly out of time and we haven't even got on to the MOJ stuff that I know that you wanted to talk about but I do want to ask you quickly about the text messages that have um, come to light from the Prime Minister to Lord Brownlow yeah. um, asking for more money for his flat and saying PS um, RE the Great Exhibition 2 a project of Lord Brownlow I'm on it. What is Labour's perception of how that looks? Well, is it cash for access? It, it stinks. It, it, does, it does appear to be cash for access. It appears that Lord Brownlow had access to the Prime Minister because he was paying to refurbish his fat flat for the, to the tune of £100,000. That of itself is corruption. But the second point you raised there, this great exhibition too, that, that was the quid pro quo, it looked like he was helping the Prime Minister in order to get the Prime Minister to funnel taxpayers' money to support this uh, great exhibition too. What's the difference between the great exhibition too that Lord Brownlow was asking for and Festival UK that the government is running this summer. You, you we need would, to ask them. You would them call for what more investigation on that. And just final word from you. You also have questions about spending in the MOJ. Just well, quickly. The, the MOJ has wasted two hundred and thirty. A million pounds this year. That would be enough to pay for 5,000 police officers. And on this show before, you've talked about the fact that reported rapes, only 0.6% of them ever ended a prosecution. If the government wasn't so incompetently wasting tens of millions of pounds, we could have those extra police officers and then people who are reporting rape could have some sense that they have a chance of getting justice. All right, Steve Reid, uh, thank you for coming to see us this morning. It's my pleasure.